our next speaker is Jon Martin Larsen. Okay, so he is a lecturer at uh, Christina University College. Um, let me see if I got it right now. Um, and, uh, and he teaches journalism, politics, communication, and social studies. And he'll be talking about attracting talents with minority background into journalism. So welcome. You know, Martin. Thank you so much, Kuman. Um, hello, everyone, dear colleagues and friends. It is the task of the press to protect individuals and groups against injustices or neglect. This particular sentence is found in the ethical code of practice for the press adopted by the Norwegian Press Association. And my main argument here with you today is that you, can, you still cannot do that task fully without minority journalists. Meaning the Norwegian media is still failing to do an important job but I'm seeing some by a group of such as Majid, Rimairaki, and Amir Horori. And the small group of so-called ethnic Norwegian journalists, for example, Olga Stokka, Ose Brandvold, and Nilas Jonsson. And defined my 30 year long journalism career. It has also been my guideline as a communication manager for the Red Cross in Norway and the Middle East, and as a communications director for the Norwegian Equality and Anti-Discrimination Ombud. That sentence has led to many opportunities for me to cover voices that needed to be heard, and has also initiated so-called campaign journalism many times. Campaign journalism is when a newspaper or a journalist takes up an issue and follow it through with a desired solution in mind, maybe also called constructive journalism. I will mention three examples. 20 years ago, we worked hard to encourage more female sources in journalism in order to improve the public debate. And from 2002 to 2008, I was allowed to campaign for a gay marriage law as a news journalist in Doxavisen, a Norwegian daily newspaper. And thirdly, the national news site for Norwegian media workers, Media 24, is giving me the opportunity to encourage diversity in Norwegian newsrooms as a columnist. But these efforts still come with a price. The risk of being a minority and ending up with all the minority stories is perhaps too familiar for some of us. Another challenge is to handle what I could describe as professional egoism in journalism, what someone else could call private activism. When Oslo hosted Europe Pride in 2005, at 16 years ago, the editor in chief of the biggest national Christian newspaper, Botlon, wrote an opinion piece in his own paper saying that I should be fired for being gay and writing about gay stuff. Only a day later, my editor-in-chief in, in Daxavisen called out the Christian editor's homophobia and stated that I was bringing highly valuable knowledge to the newsroom and that uh, with my coverage for years had proven the importance of it. He also asked, do you also mean that we need to prevent Christians from covering Christian political parties and the church? Could journalists of Pakistani heritage cover honor killings in Pakistan? Could female journalists cover all issues about equality? My editor-in-chief managed to do three very important things. He used my personal and professional insight. He asked me to find stories not covered. And he gave me trust. A year later, he gave me the position as head of the newsroom. And I think this approach is the right answer to many of our challenges today when it comes to facing all kinds of prejudices, bias and phobias inside and outside the newsrooms. My editor-in-chief 
also supported an initiative from open journalists and photographers in Doxavisen to invite LGBT plus journalists from all over Norway to parade together during Euro Pride, Pride Parade, demonstrating openness also in the newsrooms. Following this, I was invited to debate minority journalism in NRK, our national broadcasting corporation. And I remember the host asking me, how do we cover gay stories? My reply was, of course, the same way as you cover any other story. I'm not, however, sure that all this contributed to a gay liberation in Norwegian media, where LGBT plus journalists could work freely and be open about themselves. I'm still hearing from my LGBT colleagues that when they suggest LGBT stories, the editors are saying that it's not in their interest or the audience target group. And I'm still hearing about closeted journalists afraid to be open because they want to cover more than minority stories. And in public, we now have editors and columnists attacking transgender when transgenders claim the right to be who they are and try to define transphobia. This said, I think it's crucial now to share more examples and experiences on how to increase diversity in Norwegian media, among staff and in our journalism. And I'm thanking the Oslo desk for this opportunity to share. I started in Daxavisen 20 years ago, together with the first quoted my ethnic minority journalist in this paper. She was amazing, but she left after a while. I remember a colleague asking both of us, how do you interview an immigrant? Since then, the number of immigrant, immigrants and Norwegian born with immigrant parents in Norway has sharply increased. Two out of 10 have this background, like myself from a Turkish father. We also know that immigrants count for more than one third of the population in Oslo. But the number of sources with immigrant background in media has not increased since it was first measured in 2009. It's still on 2% only. This represents a failing Norwegian media and it creates a serious and damaging blind spot in journalism and in the public debate. It reveals that editors are not asking for immigrant sources and minority sources, nor do the majority of journalists network with them. Over the last two decades, we have educated more journalists and more journalists with minority background. I see more minority students in my classes, but I do not see many of them working in the media after their studies. It underlines that the editors do not hire journalists with minority background. But I'm seeing a few steps in the right direction. Following the George Floyd demonstrations, professionals are now discussing, could a black journalist cover racism in Norwegian media? Could any journalists cover racism and police brutality after joining the George Floyd demonstration? I wrote about this in Media Shufira in June last year. I encouraged journalists and my students to demonstrate against racism as a matter of free speech and basic human rights. Some editors, journalists and media academicians did not agree. And one wrote back to me and said that it could very well be conflict of interest and disqualify the journalists. This opinion was also supported by the editors in VG, Nettavisen, Aftenposten and Dagblada, some of the largest newspapers here in Norway. I'm telling you this to underline how sensitive and maybe immature these issues are in Norwegian media, and also maybe reflect on the different set of rules for white journalists and black journalists when it comes to journalism versus what is seen as activism, excluding international reporters and journalists with minority background from working in Norwegian media. However, other editors and columnists had other opinion and one highly respected columnist in Aftenposten, Ingeborg Sandesat, wrote that showing support for basic human rights and equality for all, regardless of ethnicity and appearance, 
should be uncontroversial also for journalists. Shortly after this, I wrote a new column about the urgent need for diversity in our newsrooms, together with another minority colleague. We called for more trainee positions, more diversity programs in more newspapers. VG, as one of the newspapers, has already announced it. Aftenposten has recruited several minority journalists to its new Oslo desk, and the newest newspaper for Oslo, Avisa Oslo, has promised to work in favor of a diverse staff. The Association of Norwegian Editors and the Federation for Norwegian Journalists have also had their first meeting about diversity. One of the main topics was the need to look at the recruitment process and attitude on the management level, and I think that's the right issues to discuss urgently. Journalists Jan Skiel and Fajrus Chamdid also made the annual meeting of the Federation of Journalists agreeing to prioritize diversity only earlier this month. And I'm excited to see uh, the progress on that. Also an important contribution, apart from NRK's long-lasting multicultural program to include minority journalists, is the fact that Aftenposten, Avisa Oslo and VG have hired columnists with immigrant background, minority background. Among those three, Vegas Sasha Majid is doing something spectacularly important when she dares to be as personal and professional as she is. And her writing is clearly inspiring for VG's newsroom. One day, Sasha Majid is writing about the coronavirus seriously affecting some suburbs of Oslo with high migrant population. And the next day, VG sends a reporter to explore the topic among the suburbians to explain why this is happening and campaign for a solution. That's the journalism we need. This must inspire all journalists and editors. And that's the main reason why we need to attract talents with minority background into journalism. Without you, journalism is not improving. The public debate is suffering and solutions are perhaps too far away. Norwegian editors and newsrooms are not finding these corona stories without minority journalists. Norwegian editors are also not improving their international coverage without minority journalists. Norwegian editors are not able to expand their audience without minority journalists. And the minority journalists have now a window of, of opportunity to educate the Norwegian editors on how their background can be useful in Norwegian newsrooms, including information about their studies and academic achievements, specializations and experiences that I don't think should be highlighted to promote how, how broad journalism, journalists with minority background actually can work. Now, following the first diversity meeting at the Association of Norwegian Editors and the Federation for Journalists, I have been asked to join the work after writing yet another column. And I've also challenged them to work on the following. Attitude towards diversity and inclusion and action towards inclusion must be communicated from the leaders and editors. You need to actively wish and work to recruit talents with minority background, as well as audiences and readers with minority background. Our bachelor and master programs in journalism can help to educate and recruit better, but we are not succeeding if the students do not see that they are able to get a job. Minority journalists also need to see themselves in their workplace, and they need to be able to be themselves. All member of staff need some kind of facilitation. Diversity is more than ethnicity and gender. And we also need to include double and triple minorities in our work ahead of us. We facilitate during and after pregnancy. 
we facilitate for vegans during chronic illness, adding multimedia skills to aging journalism, journalists, and we also need to facilitate possibilities for language assistance, have good routines to handle harassment cases, maybe designate a room for prayer, and encouraging including social activities that could very well be without alcohol. Lastly, I have challenged the editors to secure a proper demographic representation when they hire for their summer vacancies this summer. I'm sure this would, could be very interesting for all the editors. And I hope many of you have applied and that you are able to succeed. And finally, do not hesitate to write me if you think I ever, if you ever think I could be of any assistance to you. I'm learning from your experience as well. And it's valuable in my efforts to push for progress. Please also forward questions and comments now or later today. Thank you for your attention.